Ransomware is a vicious type of malware that cybercriminals use to block companies and individuals from accessing their business critical files, databases, or entire computer systems until the victim pays a ransom. It's a form of cyber extortion that's growing quickly in scope and in impact. Opinions on the subject are abundant, so let's take a look at some key facts to understand the true cost and frequency of ransomware attacks. Every 11 seconds, a business will be attacked by ransomware by 2021. The average cost of ransomware attacks in 2020 are over $4.4 million. As cloud services become increasingly critical to more businesses' daily operations, ransomware attacks will follow to maximize profits. And new types of ransomware attacks arise on a regular basis, and it can be difficult to keep track of all of them. So here's a list of common types of ransomware attacks, with data exfiltration being the latest. So whether your data resides in your data center or in the cloud, it's vulnerable to ransomware and malware attacks. So this is happening all around us, and all of that data is being exposed. So I'm going to show you one type of an exposure. Once I have access to the file system, I'll show you what I can do by simply compromising a single application. It's pretty scary stuff because you'll no longer have access to your data. So to start, we need to protect against this. And that's not your only problem. What if they hack the user or if they have access to the system and they simply write a few lines of code and take over your entire file system? Here are the top four baseline security practices that IT security teams are employing to defend against ransomware attacks. And here are the reasons why these security measures are failing. Security awareness training. Employees are being trained on a regular basis with simulation tools to learn how to recognize phishing emails and avoid clicking on suspicious links. But one or two employees out of hundreds could still make a mistake and succumb to phishing attacks. Then we have the different gateways. Organizations use email web security gateways to detect and block ransomware that are sent as email attachments or from suspicious websites. But these security gateways depend on signatures to detect and block ransomware. They generally cannot detect zero-day ransomware attacks for which no signatures exist. Then we have different types of scans for vulnerabilities. Organizations also scan all systems on a regular basis to detect any endpoints that are vulnerable to ransomware attacks, but they forget to patch all systems if they're not critical servers. So ransomware can gain a foothold on an employee's laptop and then laterally move to a critical server and do damage. Then we have DNS security. This can also be deployed to monitor backhaul traffic between an infected endpoint and a known CNC server. But DNS security also depends on having a domain names of known CNS servers. With domain generation algorithms and hackers can rapidly change domain names of CNC servers and thus bypass the DNS security measures. Therefore, most security products like next generation firewalls email or web gateways, endpoint protection platforms, and endpoint detection and response claim to detect malware in the earlier phases of the attack. So we can't stop all of these, right, no matter what perimeter security protection is in place these days. So let's face it, they're going to get into our systems and they'll attempt to encrypt or corrupt these files so that they can take control of them and hold them ransom. However, what I'm going to show you in the demo is really simple to apply and it's transparent to the endpoint users. Typically, any ransomware is delivered as an attachment to a phishing email that can bypass existing parameter defenses. In this demo, we're going to assume that a ransomware binary has somehow penetrated the perimeter defenses such as a firewall, web email gateway, etc. And that ransomware is running OpenSSL on the laptop files to encrypt and hold them for ransom. Once CypherTrust Transparent Encryption Agent is deployed on that laptop, it enables you to set up access control policies to protect folders or guard points as we call them. On this laptop, we have the slash data folder protected by CTE access control policies. It's our guard point. We will see how CTE prevents OpenSSL from encrypting files on the protected folder. Okay, let's head over to the demo. Here are a couple files in my data directory. You'll see there's SSN and SSN2. These are the ones we'll be using for the demo. They're vulnerable, and if someone gets access to these files, all they have to do is run some really basic code like OpenSSL on them, and I'll no longer have access to these files. They do this using any open binaries. They don't have to have to copy anything. This basically is ransomware, and it's an exposure that we have. It's as simple and easy as this. So think of it like this. 
let's say someone external has hacked into your network, right? Just like we said earlier in the, in the presentation, they were able to gain access, say, uh, by a remote worker's laptop or something. They get in, they get a VPN password or something else. Either way, keep in mind, they don't have to be a privileged user, okay, once they get in. Once they're in, they can gain access to a lot of your files. So let's take a look at my SSN2 file. I'll cat it so we can see it. We'll open this up a little bit more, make it a little easier to see. Okay, we've got information like the username, their email, their credit card number, their social security number, information like that. So watch how easy we can make that data unavailable to the end user. They can go in, use standard OpenSSL, and type some simple code and they'll destroy the data and make completely unavailable for us to uh, to use. So I'm just going to go in. We'll run a little little encryption, uh, and just to show you what we just did, I'll go ahead and decrypt it using the same key that we used to encrypt it. Okay, and I can get it. So the data is now encrypted. If they were to do this in, in a real world scenario, they would have also deleted our original file. I'm leaving it in there for demo purposes. It's that easy, you know, for malware to attack. Your exposure in the world today is that people are hacking in through VPNs onto your network. Once they have access to your network, they don't have to really do much. They don't have to corrupt Word files or, or executables or anything like that. All they have to do is grab a file or a few files or a directory, run a few lines of code, and make that data completely unusable to you, right? So that's a problem, right? Now let's watch how easy it is, what we can do uh, to fix that. So now... I'm going to come over here and we'll activate a policy. I'm going to turn this one on. We'll enable it. It might take a moment for it to go active. So now that the policy is enabled, let's see if we can run that same code. So let me pull up my command prompt again. Let's try to encrypt it. That's decrypt. This is encrypt. Let's see if we can do this now. Oh. Permission denied. Okay. Reason why is in my policy, if I go into here, Monty has authorized applications. What are those authorized applications? Cat. All right, so I can go into cat and I can see that that's an authorized application within. Okay, Linux cat. All right, I can also sign this uh, binary. So if I go up to signatures and go into Linux cat, we can see that it is signed. And here's my signature for that binary. Okay. Once we implement this guard point and the policy, that data is no longer available to anybody. Monty can still get to it using cat. Okay. If I go into here, we can run that. Uh, let's see, let's grab my cat for Monty. And he can still get in it, okay? He can't grep it, he can't VI it. In fact, here, I'll, I'll grep it and show you. It fails. Again, permission denied. Okay, but again, if Monty uses uh, cat, it works because that's an authorized application. So I know this looks... It sounds too easy, but let me explain how we do this and why we differ from any other solution out there on the market today. Once the encryption agent's installed, it will protect your sensitive files and or databases. All right? We do this by limiting access uh, using our access controls. By allowing specific users access, we can also allow only the application or the signed application and the application user to have access and then block all others from accessing that data. Hence, protecting it from being encrypted, removed, stolen, held for ransom. Our product is all automatic, it's dynamic, and most of all, it is transparent to the end user community. With modern day ransomware attacks, the smallest compromise can grow into a disastrous breach. However, you can use CypherTrust transparent encryption from Talos to prevent ransomware attacks before the damage is done. CypherTrust transparent encryption blocks untrusted or rogue binaries from accessing the data files or folders using the fine-grained access controls and protects it by encrypting your data. This means when the ransomware attack strikes, it will get denied access to the data and if the data is exfiltrated, it'll be unusable. 
CypherTrust Transparent Encryption is a part of CypherTrust Data Encryption Platform. Organizations like yours can rely on CypherTrust Data Security Platform to help discover, classify, and protect your most sensitive data wherever it resides. Thank you for watching this demo. Have a great day.